I'm terrified of the deep ocean, but it also fascinates me. I love to think about what it would be like to be an animal living in this environment. And of all the animals that call the deep sea home, none fascinate me more than the various squid species. Consider this. All animals on this planet need to grapple with the questions of how do I find food, how do I find a mate, and how do I protect myself? But in the deep ocean, the stakes are just that much higher. So today, let's explore how six different deep sea squid species have found a way not just to survive, but to thrive in the deep ocean. We'll explore topics like marine giantism, bioluminescence, and incredible hunting and feeding strategies. Let's jump in. I've spent a lot of time learning about strange creatures in the ocean, but few animals surprise me like squid, especially the ones living in the deep. Down there, in a world with no sunlight, crushing pressures, and almost no food, squid have evolved some of the most bizarre survival strategies on the planet. Some have dinner plate sized eyes, others shimmer like living constellations, a few trail arms longer than your car. They glow, they vanish, they use light as a weapon. And the deeper we go, the stranger they get. The first we'll be exploring is the colossal squid. Imagine living where the sun never reaches, no shadows, no moonlight, just pure, endless black. In the deep, sight isn't guaranteed, but for the colossal squid, it's everything. These giants have the largest eyes of any animal on Earth, up to 27 centimeters across. 27 centimeters is close to 11 inches, so at the same size of an average dinner plate. Thinking about that in context and imagining coming eye to eye with that, I really can't imagine what I would do if I was underwater and suddenly saw an 11 inch eye. In a place where predators like sperm whales hunt by sound, the squid relies on its huge eyes to detect the faintest flashes of light. A quick side note that of all of the many battles that take place on our planet, all of the predator-prey relationships that I can think of, there is no predator-prey or predator-predator interaction that gives me more chills, excitement, and just that awe factor than thinking about colossal or giant squid going head-to-head -head with a sperm whale in the deep ocean. Looking at either of these animals, you can see just the sheer majesty of each one, but imagining these two fighting one another in pure darkness, under crushing depths, I mean, it's amazing. I think about it all the time. A single bioluminescent flicker in the distance could signal danger, or dinner. Their retinas are packed with light-sensitive cells, tuned to pick up blue wavelengths, the only colors that penetrate these depths. With eyes like telescopes, colossal squid can track glowing prey or oncoming threats from incredible distances. And yet, this strategy isn't universal. Some squid, like glass squid, evolved the opposite solution, not seeing better, but disappearing entirely. Because in the deep, there are two ways to survive, see everything or be seen by nothing. Next, let's take a closer look at the firefly squid. When you reach about 200 meters below the surface, or about 660 feet, the last threads of sunlight vanish, and light becomes precious. But here, one squid creates its own. Meet the firefly squid, a creature that speaks in light. Its body is covered in hundreds of photophores, tiny organs that produce electric blue bioluminescence. And these aren't random glows, this is communication. Firefly squid use light to a. Hide, glowing from below to match starlight above, which helps them vanish into the black. B. Signal, meaning that they use flashing patterns to attract mates or coordinate group hunting. Or C. Defend, using light as blinding bursts of blue to confuse predators mid-attack. Once a year, millions of them gather off Japan's coast in one of the ocean's greatest spectacles, a living galaxy pulsing at the shoreline. For squid, light isn't just illumination, it's language. It's how they coordinate, seduce, and survive, all without a sound. Next, let's look at a truly bizarre squid, the big fin squid. If firefly squid are poets, the big fin squid is an engineer. This species looks like something out of science fiction, a pale, hovering body, and arms that stretch up to 20 times its length, bending at strange elbows before trailing deep into the dark. Scientists think these arms act like living fishing lines, 
The squid drifts motionless, arms dangling, filaments spread out. When something brushes past, it simply reels it in, using minimal effort, no chase required. These things freak me out. <laughs> Truly, look at that. It scares me every time to imagine them just swimming and drifting through the deep, waiting for something to touch their tentacles. In a habitat where meals can be hours or even days apart, this strategy is genius. Conserve energy, wait patiently, let food come to you. A close relative, the whiplash squid, pushes this idea further with ultra-thin, meter-long filaments that sweep invisible nets through the abyss. In the deep, energy is life, and the big thin squid shows us that patience pays. Next, let's investigate the Dana octopus squid. Finding a mate is hard enough when you live on land, but in the deep ocean, where you might never meet another of your kind, evolution has to get creative. The Dana octopus squid carries some of the most powerful light organs in the animal kingdom. Photophores the size of golf balls. These bursts of light serve a single purpose. Attract mates from hundreds of meters away. These bursts of light serve a triple purpose. Attract mates from hundreds of meters away. Coordinate spawning when swarms gather in the darkness and stun prey, freezing small fish long enough to strike. But the Dana squid isn't alone in its romantic innovations. Some deep sea squid release giant sperm packets, attaching them anywhere on a female's body, and hoping she takes care of the rest. Others, like the Histiotuthis or cockatoo squid, use dazzling bioluminescent displays rippling across their skin during courtship. And in some species, mating is, let's just say, efficient. Sexual cannibalism isn't unheard of when food is scarce. Sexual cannibalism is, you guessed it, the act of a female animal consuming a male mate before, during, or after mating. This behavior is not unique to squid. It's seen in a lot of invertebrate species like spiders, mantises, and octopuses. But the practice does tend to have similar benefits for all the animals that practice this. The female is able to get nutrients for their offspring and increase their reproductive output. And it may also benefit the male by increasing his genetic contribution to the offspring or the likelihood of paternity if he is cannibalized after mating. In a world where encounters are rare, squid have turned light into love notes. The ocean may be silent, but it's never without signals. Now, we mentioned the glass squid earlier but let's do a deeper dive into this amazing group of squid. I've actually made a whole video on the glass squid previously, so if you're interested in that, click the link on the screen now. Some squid choose spectacle, others are masters of silence. The glass squid is almost entirely transparent. Bones, muscles, mantle, all invisible. Only its eyes and digestive organs betray its existence. But it gets cleverer still. When threatened, glass squid curl into a ball hiding their light-producing organs and appearing like nothing more than a drifted speck. Some of their cousins go one step further. They can adjust their transparency depending on depth, switching between glass-clear camouflage and a near-black silhouette depending on where the light fades. Where firefly squid dazzle and Dana squid signal, the glass squid shows us a different kind of mastery. Sometimes the best survival strategy is not being seen at all. Finally, what squid video would be complete without the vampire squid? Here our journey ends. This is the strangest squid of all, if you ask me, or at least the one maybe comparable to the big fin squid in terms of the shivers it sends into my spine. Despite the name, the vampire squid is not a predator. Instead, it lives where almost nothing else can survive, the oxygen minimum zones. These are vast stretches of ocean with so little oxygen, most animals suffocate here. The vampire squid evolved to work around. Its blood carries three times as much oxygen as ours, thanks to a molecule called hemocyanin. And rather than burning energy hunting, it floats gently, catching marine snow. Marine snow is essentially tiny flakes of dead organisms that are drifting from the surface, and entire ocean ecosystems rely on this uh, nutrient-rich snow that falls from the surfaces all the way to the bottom. When threatened, the vampire squid performs a stunning defense, flipping itself inside out, wrapping its webbed arms over its body, and flashing bright bioluminescent tips. To predators, it suddenly looks alien, unappetizing, and impossible to track. 
It's one of the most efficient survivors in the ocean, proof that in the deep, success doesn't mean being fastest or strongest. It means being adaptable. So how can we wrap this all up together? Well, think of it as survival by strangeness. From dinner plate eyes to living light shows, dangling arm nets to transparent bodies, deep sea squid have evolved to thrive in one of the harshest environments on Earth. They're proof that uh, 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 life finds a way, even when the rules of survival seem impossible. And every time we send a camera deeper, we discover something stranger and something beautiful. That is got to be one of my very favorite parts about ocean exploration. The fact that in this day and age where it feels like there's no more it mystery to find, there are still discoveries being made in the deep ocean. You hear all the time that we know more about the surface of the moon or the surface of Mars than we do about our own planet's inner depths. But looking at any one of these squid, you realize just how much more is out there for us to uncover, for us to learn, and for us to continue to study. The deep, it isn't really rare to be weird. Weird is survival down here. And to me, that's a precious thing. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Ned and I'm a science storyteller and this is The Curious Current where we do deep dives into all the mystery that the ocean has to offer. If you like this video, please consider liking it, subscribing, and leaving a comment to let me know what you'd like to learn about next. There's so much left to learn and we're just scratching the surface. Thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay current.